Got some really tough words here. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you're just going to need to sit down and study some words and it's going to suck. It sucks. It's so time consuming. But if you really want to get these vocab questions right, you're going to need to learn these words because this is obvious. This answer is obvious. Political blogs with conspicuous ideological alignments became an integral component of U.S. media in the early 2000s. While some commentators lauded this development, asserting that such blogs had a welcome transparency missing from traditional news, this is all positive, less blank observers countered that such blogs tended to be uh, ideological extremes that exacerbated political polarization to problematic levels. So this is negative, but notice what they're doing here. They're twisting it up uh, to even confuse us further. But like, if we can see that twist, it's pretty obvious if we want to say something negative here, we need the blank to be a positive word because the word less before it is negating that positive. So we need to have a positive word, even though that extra clause is negative. So what's a positive word here? Well, just from the connotations and knowing the words, positive, negative, negative, positive, less earnest observers. Earnest means that you try hard at things. So I don't, I don't see what we're trying hard here at all. It doesn't, no one's trying anything. It's just opinions. So that doesn't make sense. And sanguine, which is how you pronounce that word, just means optimistic. So less optimistic people countered that the blogs were bad, that they exacerbated problems. So perfect fit. Done. Easy. Because I know the word sanguine, this is a very easy question. There's a little twist in the middle there, but I don't know. I, I don't. I think as far as the twisted questions go, that that's pretty easy. So you just get another word. So we've got recalcitrant, which kind of means like you're you're stubborn, you resist authority, you're you're disobedient. So um, that's obviously a negative word. And um, the observers are not like going against people. They're not like I don't know. Like disobedient, not means like to argue against. It means to like I don't know, like fight against, rebel against. So it's just not quite right. Uh, misanthropic, if you are misanthropic, you are a misanthrope, which means you just kind of hate everybody. You're just kind of a, you know, a wet blanket, as sometimes we say, someone who hates people and is just not getting along with anyone. So um, good synonym here, misanthropic means just kind of rude or unfriendly. Let's keep it at that, unfriendly. Um, so it doesn't make any sense here either. Now, there are a lot of other hard words in the passage itself, right? Political blogs with conspicuous, meaning obvious or noticeable ideological alignments became an integral or important component of U.S. media in the early 2000s, while some commentators lauded or praised this development, asserting that such blogs, blogs had a welcome transparency missing from traditional news, meaning uh, openness, missing from traditional news. Less sanguine observers countered that such blogs tended to ideological extremes that exacerbated, that made worse uh, political polarization to problematic levels. So there are other words in there that have very specific meanings to do with politics and ideology or what people believe, but whew, this is a dense one, right? So this is also a reminder that as you're doing SAT prep, yes, you should be going out actively and looking for words. And I've got word lists on my website. I know there's tons out there on the internet. You know, the more words is better. But you should also be taking advantage of opportunities within your SAT practice to learn new words as well. You know, if you, if you get a question right, but there are still some words in there that you didn't quite know, take a second, type them in the dictionary, see what you can get. You know, it's not hard to learn new words. Keep a notebook if you need to and write them down so you have a, a little bit of a way of you're coming back to them or just maybe the, the writing them down helps get an example sentence or two on that page as well. Put it in a Google Doc or something. I don't care. But if you really want a top score, there's no other option. You have to learn what sanguine means. You have to learn what misanthropic means. Odds are very good they're never going to come up again. But they could come up. We've seen it. So you got to learn words and, and that's going to be a lot of effort, but it, there's a good reward is you'll get a great score.